So, the Daughters of Mars unit pack has been released for Rome 2. What is a unit pack, you ask? Well, you may remember we got a very controversial one a while back called the Beasts of War, which I also did a review on. In this video, I'm going to break down what you get in the pack, and then also what my thoughts are on the whole thing. The Daughters of Mars unit pack adds female warriors to different factions and as mercenaries throughout the Grand Campaign. The pack contains 12 new units in total, focusing most heavily on the Suevi. The 12 is not counting the 4 units that were added also today as free DLC. So either way, your Rome 2 is going to have the feminine touch added to it if you choose to update your game. The 4 free units are... Hexbearers, a Swaby only unit, are mid-tier sword infantry with only 80 troops in each unit, as opposed to the regular 160. The trade-off is that they can activate an ability called Curse, which lowers the morale of the enemy by 10 in a radius around them. I find it best to have just one of this unit in the army, and don't let them engage until the second half of the battle, as they can break the morale of a lot of troops. In terms of fighting skill, they are outmatched by similar units because of their numbers, so you really want to put the curse to good use. Amazonian Riders, a Royal Scythia only unit, are good quality light horse archers with a very good range matching most regular foot archers, which is quite good for their tier. Mercenary Amazonian Riders, this unit is the same as the Royal Scythia unit, but can be recruited by anyone in the Sarmatia, Ponto Caspia and Scythia regions. Scythian Noble Women, a Royal Scythia only unit, are similar to the Amazonian Riders. The Scythian Noble Women are medium horse cavalry with really good range. Most cavalry archers have 125 range, but the Amazonian Riders and Scythian Noble Women have 150, giving you a clear advantage over those without them. They also have the Parthian shot, allowing them to fire in all directions, so now your horse archers can run from other horse archers while attacking them. So that's the free units out of the way. That's safe. You'll definitely be going home with that. Now let's see what your hard-earned cash will get you, or like me, money you've just been given by people on the internet. First up, I'll go through the expansion to the Swaby roster. We have Horse Runners, a light missile unit. These are pretty much the same as their Germanic youth counterpart, but for 150 more gold. You get a unit that's able to handle itself in a melee fight as well, with melee attack better than those close to the first three units in the sword infantry category. So when they're actually done throwing their missiles, they're pretty good at fighting off some light units or helping others. Spear Wall are a mid-tier heavy spear infantry unit, almost the same as the Spear Brothers unit. These guys have much more morale, defense, health and armor for an extra 180 gold. Round Shield Swordsmen are good mid-tier sword infantry that filled a nice gap in the Swaby roster for a sword unit that didn't cost much but had relatively good damage and armor. They have a good balance of everything and also have the headhunt ability which increases their melee attack by 5, lowering their melee defense by 5 and pretty much maxing out their morale for a limited time. Riders of the Hunt also fills a good gap in the Swaby roster for a mid-tier cavalry unit. Previously the Swaby only had one unit of cavalry for the melee cavalry section, the Noble Riders. While extremely good, they're very expensive, so if you want a not so expensive unit to fill your ranks, Riders of the Hunt are decent melee cavalry on par with the likes of the Equites or Saki Equites of Rome. Zimbri Bowwomen are excellent missile units. These girls could rival Cretan archers, they're so good, and for almost half the cost. For only 80 gold more than the normal Swaby archers, you get a unit with literally way more of every stat except armor which remains the same. Even fully upgrading the longbow hunters won't get you even close to this unit. They're also fairly unique, as when they're in melee combat they perform quite well and have large spears. I could be wrong, but I think they are the only archer unit to switch their spears when in melee instead of swords. This unit is limited to 6 per army. Finally, we have the spear women for the Swaby, which are also limited to 6 per army, but I'm not really sure why. For the most part, they're just good spear infantry that fits in the middle of the row in terms of strength for other spear infantry. They do however have the expert charge defense trait which automatically boosts their melee attack and weapon damage if they are fighting a charging unit. Before moving on to the mercenaries, it's worth mentioning that the Lusitani get one unit of Lusitani Swordswomen, a pretty basic sword infantry unit similar to the basic Iberian Swordsmen, but just with slightly different stats. Also the Romans get one unit of Spear Gladiatrices. This unit is a different variation on the Roman gladiators, trading a good attack for a good defense and higher morale. Instead of the Killing Spree ability, they have a Frenzied Charge increasing their bonus and charge speed. Now on to the mercenaries. All of these mercenaries can be recruited by any nation so long as they are in the correct province. 
First up we have Mercenary Spearwomen. These again are the exact same as the Swaby unit of the same name and can be recruited in Magna Germania, Swabia and Silesia. Next we have Gorgos Skirmishers, which are your basic slinger unit with a bit more damage, higher fire rate and morale. These fine women can be recruited in the province of Hellas. Mercenary Kushit Shield Women are a very good mid-tier spear unit with high morale and damage but quite low health. They can be recruited in the province of Ethiopia. Lastly, our final unit of the day is the Gladiatrices, which are basically female gladiators. Their stats are comparable to the Roman gladiators and are higher in every category except charge, bonus and health. A pretty good unit if you're looking for gladiators without wanting to build a gladiator school, and they look absolutely badass. These are not to be confused with the spear gladiatrices of the Roman army. So that's everything you get in the DLC pack. Now I didn't get a chance to ask anybody how they felt about this DLC as it just kind of dropped out of nowhere, but I'm actually pretty happy with it. A lot of people complained when Beasts of War dropped saying it wasn't worth the price, it's stuff we had seen before and it didn't have good production value, and I agree with those people 100%. The trailer for it was by far more polished than the product. For the Daughters of Mars however, real work has gone into this and it shows. There are a variety of different models for all the women in their different regions, from the Spanish variations to the Greek, Ethiopian and Germanic. Each unit has a pretty distinct look to them. They also have the proper voice work done, although I think the same voices were used for all regions. Unlike the accents for the males in different regions, so basically the dark-skinned girls of the south sound the same as the pale northerners. So I'm actually really happy with the quality of units on display. Something I do feel a bit off about is the fact that the units are also scattered. It seems like if you were to have a campaign with most of the factions in the game, you'll probably only ever pick up a couple of mercenary women ever in your entire playthrough. So from that aspect, it seems like if it's something you rarely use or see, it might not be to your liking. If you did just want to see a female unit, you'll get that anyway with the free DLC. That said, the Swaby have got a massive boost to their roster, so if you have an interest in that faction, I'd definitely pick up the DLC and try out what's sure to be one of the most powerful factions in the game now. Excellent archers, excellent skirmishers, berserkers, better cavalry and some more unique units have really bolstered this faction's strength a great deal. Lastly, I know there will probably be some complaints about historical inaccuracy, as there always is, I tried looking up where female warriors were used in ancient warfare and the accounts are scarce but it did happen. It seemed like women would only be used in the most dire of situations when they were just absolutely necessary to fill the ranks. I couldn't find any instances of actual female units other than Amazonians in Italy and Greece. Again though, they were self-declared and not really trained in the military. If you're someone who cares about the historical authenticity then perhaps this isn't for you, but honestly I don't feel like it has broken my immersion of the game. The female units are rare enough to make it seem like it's realistic to me. Anyway guys, and girls, that's my thoughts on the DLC. It's small, kinda trivial, but it does bolster the German roster and it does look pretty cool and add something a bit different to the game. Let me know what you think, it'll be interesting to see what people make of this DLC. That's all from me, and I'll see you in the next one.